Hello and welcome back to part two of this tax processes for business mock exam walkthrough. So in part one, we covered tasks one through to four. And in this part two video, we'll be covering tasks five through to eight. So we'll not hang around, let's get straight into it onto task five, which is worth 12 marks and is about verifying VAT returns. This task contains parts A through to C. Maggie's Market uses accounting software to calculate the VAT due to or from HMRC and no specialist scheme is used. The accounts assistant for Maggie's Market is reviewing the VAT return for the quarter end of the 30th of November 2021 before passing it to the accountant for approval. Part A then, identify whether the following transactions should be included in box one or box four of the VAT return to the 30th of November, 2021. Right then, so hopefully these should be relatively straightforward. I'm hoping at this point you have the knowledge on these items, but let's just walk through. So the fuel scale charge is to be included in box one. We are charging ourselves the VAT for the private use on fuel. We've then got VAT on goods taken for private use. Well, again, we'd need to charge ourselves for that VAT as though we sold them, so that would be box one. VAT on bad debt relief, where we are claiming back the VAT that we would have originally paid to HMRC on the sale of the goods or services. However, we're writing that off. We're saying that we will no longer receive that money from the customer and therefore can claim the VAT back on those items and therefore would go in box four. And then lastly, VAT on credit notes issued to customers. Well, this would be a reduction to our output tax. Therefore, it would go in box one, but as a minus because it would reduce our output tax. Hopefully nothing too complicated there. So moving on, the accountant for Maggie's Market did not carry out her review of the previous quarter's VAT return as she was off ill. The accountant has discovered two non-deliberate careless errors in the previous quarter's VAT return. Error one, a payment to HMRC for VAT totaling 3,525 pounds, 28 pence, has been accounted for as input VAT and error two, a sales invoice including VAT of £7,370 has been posted twice. Part B then, complete the following statement about the two errors. So error one, we've got input tax has been and then we've got the following options of understated or overstated. Well, because the payment to HMRC has been accounted for as input VAT, and it definitely shouldn't have been accounted for as input VAT, the input tax would have been overstated. A payment to HMRC is neither input tax or output tax. It's simply the business paying over the amount that they did owe to HMRC to clear off that amount. So if it was accounted for as input VAT, that would have increased the amount of input VAT on the business's VAT return, and therefore it would have been overstated. Error two then, it says output tax has been, and again, we've got either understated or overstated. Well, if a sales invoice has been posted twice, that would have been recorded as output tax, which would go to box one. So if it's been posted twice, it has been overstated because it's been included in box one twice. Moving down then. Right then, so the next part, it says calculate the value of the net error from the previous quarter. Enter your answers to the nearest penny. So all we need to do here is look how much the output tax has been overstated by, have a look how much the input tax has been overstated by, and then your difference between the two figures is going to be your net error. So the input tax has been overstated by £3,525.28 according to error one. And error two says the output tax has been overstated by 7,370. So what we would do is we would calculate the difference between those two figures. 
So it would be 7,370 minus 3,525 pounds 28 to give you a difference of 3,844 pounds 72 pence. So that would be your net error. So we can enter that in now. It then says complete the following statement about the net error. The net error will, and we've either got increase or decrease, and then output or input tax. So we know that the net error resulted in paying more output tax than the error for the input tax. So we've paid £3,844.72 more to HMRC. Therefore, to correct that, we would have to claim that back through our input tax, i.e. box 4. So the net error, to be able to claim that back, the net error will increase our input tax. Right then, next on the list. The box 6 figure for Maggie's market for the previous quarter totaled 955,000. See then. Identify the reporting threshold for separate reporting of non-deliberate errors in the previous quarter's VAT return for Maggie's market. So the reporting threshold that HMRC sets out for non-deliberate errors is up to £10,000 from a previous return. So we'd select 10000 and then following on from that, Identify the correct action that the accountant of Maggie's Market must take to report errors below the threshold. So we've got three options. Amend the VAT return for the previous period. Well, definitely wouldn't be that because you can't do that. Once it's submitted, it's gone. We've then got report the errors to HMRC in writing or using form VAT 652. Well, because we are below the £10,000 limit and 1% of the total sales, it wouldn't be that option either. So the correct option would be correct the errors on the current VAT return. Excellent, right? That covers task five. So let's now move on to task six, which is worth 11 marks. This task is about VAT rules on record keeping, filing and payment slash repayment, including non-compliant implications. This task contains part A through to D. You are working as a trainee in an accountancy practice. Alp Textiles Limited, a client, started to trade on the 1st of August 2021 and registered for VAT on that date. Alp Textile Limited's turnover for the first three months exceeded the VAT registration limit. Part A then, identify whether the following statements are true or false. So the first statement, it is compulsory for Alp Textiles Limited to sign up for making tax digital. Well, that now is a requirement for everyone, so that will be true. If a client is signed up for making tax digital, an accountancy practice is not permitted to submit VAT returns on their behalf. Well, that is definitely not true. An accountancy practice can still absolutely submit VAT returns on behalf of the client. So that will be false. Moving on then, Alt Textiles Limited has not registered for any special schemes. The first VAT return is for the period to the 31st of October, 2021. Part B then, select the due date for the VAT return for the period to the 31st of October, 2021 for Alt Textiles Limited. Well, as the period end is the 31st of October, the business has one month and seven days from the end of that period, i.e. the 31st of October, to be able to submit its VAT return. So we should see on here, let's hope for the 7th of December, which we do. So it's a month and seven days after the end of the period at which the VAT return is due. Next then, Alp Textiles has set up a direct debit for the payment of VAT. Select the date that HMRC will collect any payment of VAT that is due for the period to the 31st of October from Alp Textiles Limited. So if a business opts to pay through direct debit, 
they actually get an additional three days at which point HMRC will take the money. So it would be the 10th of December. So the return will be due on the 7th and then payment will be taken if the business opts to pay through direct debit three days later, therefore the 10th of December. Next then, the directors of Alp Textiles Limited understand that certain business records should be retained according to HMRC rules. Part C then, identify which one of the following business records does not need to be retained by Alp Textiles Limited for VAT purposes. So our options are documents relating to the purchase of goods, we definitely need those. The bank statements of the business, again, definitely need to see those for that purposes. Correspondence from the bank about a personal loan for a director, well, that would not be subject to VAT. So that will definitely be uh, one that doesn't need to be retained, but let's just discount the last one as well. Details of sales orders from customers, yeah, we definitely need that one. So it would be option three, correspondence from the bank about a personal loan for a director. A personal loan would be outside the scope of VAT. There'd be absolutely no VAT on it. So HMRC would not be required to see that documentation. So it would be option three. Right then, so identify to which year Alp Textiles Limited must keep the business records for the VAT period ended the 31st of October 2021. So the business is required to keep its VAT records for six years. So it was six years from the 31st of October 2021, which takes us up to 2027. Right then, next on the list, identify the consequences for Alt Textiles Limited if VAT records are not kept for the required length of time, i.e. what is the penalty? So we've got four options. A notice of assessment would be issued. The VAT registration would be withdrawn. A penalty may be issued or a default surcharge notice would be issued. Well, under HMRC guidance, if VAT records are not kept for the required length of time, then a penalty may be issued. So it would be option three. Right then, another client is Bexty Limited for whom you prepare and submit quarterly VAT returns. Bexty Limited has an annual turnover of 263,000. Due to the retirement of the finance director, Bexty Limited have been late with VAT payments and they are in a surcharge period. The first default within the surcharge period was registered for the quarter ended the 31st of January 2021. Part D then, select the penalty that will apply to Bexty Limited for each of the following VAT quarters, where the returns have been submitted on time, but the payments have not been made on time. So we've already had one surcharge and the rules for this are different if the business is under £150,000 total turnover or over £150,000, which in Bexty Limited's case, they are over £150,000. So in which case we would have this as the second surcharge. As the first one, it says has already been registered for the quarter ended the 31st of January 2021. So let's bring up the reference material here because I think this is a great example of where the reference material comes in useful. So we want to be looking in this column here because the surcharge if the annual turnover is 150,000 or more would apply. So for the 30th of April 2021 we are looking at the second surcharge and it says 5% and this is of the VAT due or no surcharge if this is less than 400 pounds. So we first need to work out then what is 5% of the VAT due. So 5% of 5,100 would be 255 pounds. Now, as this is lower than the £400, then there would be no surcharge. So the penalty would be zero. 
Moving down to the next one, on the 31st of July 2021, the VAT due is £180. Now, this will be the third surcharge, so it would either be 10% or £30, whichever is more. So 10% of the VAT due of this £180 would be £18. But it states or £30, whichever is more. Well, because the £30 is more than the £18, the £30 surcharge would apply. So the penalty would be £30. And then on the last option, 31st of October 2021, bear in mind this is now the fourth surcharge. We have VAT due of £2,700 and it states 15% or £30, whichever is more. So I think we can tell straight away that 15% of the VAT due is going to be more. So if we do 15% of £2,700, that comes to £405. So the penalty for the 31st of October 2021 would be £405. Okay, we close our reference material down now. And that, like I said, is a great example of where that can come in really useful because it is very difficult to remember all the charges that apply, all the late filing fees. So please do use the reference material if you have forgot those, which is completely understandable. So last on the list then, it says complete the following statement. If the return for the quarter ended the 31st of October 2021 had been paid on time, but not submitted on time, the penalty would be, and we need to click lower, higher, or the same. We'll consider in the penalty amount is based on the VAT outstanding at that moment in time. And within this question, it states that the VAT was paid on time, but not submitted on time. The additional surcharge would not apply. Therefore, the penalty would be lower. And that's due to the fact that there would be no outstanding VAT for this submission. Right then, that covers task number six. We can now move on to task number seven. So task seven is worth 12 marks and is about the principles of payroll. This task contains parts A through to C. Part A then, match the definitions below with the correct terms. So the first definition, the total earnings of an employee for a pay period after tax-free deductions. And then we've got four different options. So we've got gross pay, net pay, pay rate, and taxable pay. So let's have a quick read through all four of the definitions, and then we can go back through and answer them. The total earnings of an employee for a pay period, the amount earned by employees per hour, and the amount an employee receives in their bank account for a pay period after all deductions have been made. Okay then, let's work through each one then. So the first one, total earnings of an employee for a pay period after tax-free deductions would be their taxable pay. The total earnings of an employee for a pay period would be their gross pay. The amount earned by employees per hour would be the pay rate and the amount an employee receives in their bank account for a pay period after all deductions have been made would be their net pay. Okay, nothing too complex on that top one. A good way to break into the question. So part B then, identify whether the following statements about registering as an employee are true or false. The first statement then, only businesses are required to register as employers, not individuals. Well, that would definitely be false. As an individual, you are able to have employees. So if you're a sole trader, it is well possible that you could employ people. So therefore, you could have members of staff and you would have to register as an employer. So that would be false. Right then, on to the next one. 
Registration as an employer cannot be more than two months before employees are first paid. Well, that one is true. So that is under HMRC guidance that as an employer, it cannot be more than two months before an employee is first paid that you register for payroll. Right then, moving on to the next question. Sunday's Bakery employs one member of staff, Desi, who reduced his hours from January 2022. Sunday's Bakery pays HMRC monthly and is entitled to the employment allowance. Below are some details from Desi's pay slips for December 2021 and January 2022. And we can see within the table that we've got a list of payroll information relating to Desi for the months December 21 and January 22. It then states the employment allowance for Sunday's Bakery for December 2021 is £146.69 and for January 2022 it's nil. Part C then, complete the table below to show the taxable pay and net pay for Desi and the amount payable to HMRC by Sunday's Bakery for December 2021 and January 2022. Enter all figures to two decimal places. So to calculate Desi's taxable pay, what we'd need to do is take the gross pay and we'd need to deduct off any allowable deductions. Now out of this list, there is only one allowable deduction and that would be the employee's pension contribution. So this will be deducted before calculating the tax on their income. So to calculate the taxable pay, it will be £1,800 as the gross pay minus the employee's pension contribution of £90, giving us a taxable pay of 1,710. On to the net pay then for December 21. So to calculate this, we would take again the gross pay to start off with, and then we would make the necessary deductions to leave us with what would actually be paid across to Desi's bank account. So to calculate that, we would do the gross pay of 1,800, and then we would deduct off the income tax of £132.40. We would deduct the employee's national insurance contribution of £120.36. We wouldn't deduct the employer's national insurance. That would stay as is. That's paid by the employer. We would then deduct the employee's pension contribution of £90. And we deduct the student loan of £12. And by doing that, that gives us a net pay figure of £1,445.24. So let's enter that in. And then the last figure to calculate is the amount payable to HMRC. So this would be the income tax. It would be both national insurance contributions and it would be the student loan figure. If we add all of those up, that would be the amount that is payable to HMRC. And remember, this is paid across by the employer. So if we add those figures up, that should give us £411.45. Now, all we need to do with that figure is take off the employment allowance, which it states within the question, which in December 2021 is £146.69. So we do £411.45 minus £146.69. And that gives us an amount payable to HMRC of £264.76. So that covers December 2021. We can now move on to January 2022. And we'll basically follow very similar principles. So we'll start out with the taxable pay. So same again, it will be the gross pay of £600 minus the employee's contribution of 90 to give us a taxable pay of 510. The net pay would then be calculated as the gross pay less the income tax, which in this case is a minus, so this actually needs to be added on so it would be 600 plus 107 pounds 60 minus the employee's pension contribution of 90 which would give us 
a net pay figure of £617.60. And enter that in. And then lastly, the amount payable to HMRC, which in this case, because there's no income tax and there's no national insurance and no student loan, the amount payable to HMRC would be zero. Fantastic, right, okay, and that covers task seven. So we can click answer on that one and move on to our final task, which is task eight. Right then, so the last task, task eight, is worth eight marks and is about reporting information on VAT and payroll. This task contains parts A through to C. You are a trainee accountant at Dorian Co Limited. Your main responsibility is to prepare and submit VAT returns for numerous clients. You have prepared the VAT return for VC Dry Cleaners Limited for the quarter end of the 31st of December, 2021. Extracts from the accounting software show the following. So we've got output VAT of 5,300, input VAT of 308 pounds 92, and then our outputs and inputs. Part A then, complete the following details about the information you will send to the client. Enter the figure in the box to two decimal places. When completing dates, you must enter the year in full, i.e. 2001. The amount due to HMRC is, so this one would simply be the difference between your output tax and input tax within the table above. That would therefore be 5,300 in terms of output tax minus 308 pounds 92 an input tax. This gives us an amount due to HMRC of 4,991 pounds and eight pence. So let's enter that in. It then asks the VAT return must be submitted to HMRC by and remember, this is one that we spoke about earlier within this mock run through, that you have a month and seven days in which to submit the return. So if the quarter end was the 31st of December 2021, it would be one month and seven days from that point, which takes us to the 7th of February. So let's enter that in. So February the 7th, and we'd have gone into the next year at this point, so it'd be 2022. VAT payments to HMRC are made by direct debit. The direct debit will be taken on, and again, something that I actually spoke about earlier within the mock run through again, you get an additional three days after the filing date if you pay by direct debit. So it would be the 10th of February. And again, 2022. Moving down then, identify when the VAT return for VC Dry Cleaners Limited can be submitted to HMRC. So we've got three options here. Once your manager has reviewed the return, as soon as you have prepared the return, or once authorization has been received from the directors of VC Dry Cleaners. So remember you are acting on behalf of the client, but they would need to be the one who authorizes the submission. So in order for you to be able to submit that through to HMRC, it would be once authorization has been received from the directors of VC Dry Cleaners. Right then, next, you have established that the flat rate scheme may be more beneficial for VC Dry Cleaners. The relevant flat rate percentage is 12% and the business is not a limited cost business. Part B then, calculate the amount of VAT due if VC Dry Cleaners Limited were registered under the flat rate scheme, ignoring the 1% discount. So just to say the 1% discount is what you receive in the first year of joining the flat rate scheme. So we're saying that doesn't apply. Enter your answer to the nearest penny. So remember that the flat rate percentage is applied to the gross or total sales revenue figure. So we can find the figures up in this table above. So the outputs figure, this would be the figure that's entered into box six of the VAT return. 
and it is the net amount of all sales. Now because the flat rate percentage is applied to the gross or total amount of sales, we would first need to add on the output VAT to this net sales figure in order to get our gross amount. So to calculate this, we would do outputs of 26,500, we would add the VAT back on of 5,300, which gives us a gross or total sales amount of £31,800. So what we need to do now is apply the 12% to that figure. So it would be 31800 multiplied by 12%. And that gives us a VAT due figure under the flat rate scheme of £3,816. The next one on the list then says identify what course of action you should take with your findings. And again, we've got three options. So do nothing as the client has the responsibility for changing schemes. Well, that absolutely wouldn't be true. Don't forget, working on behalf of the client, it would also be our job to advise if we think something is beneficial for them. So it wouldn't be do nothing. We've got discuss the matter with your line manager. It seems a very likely option. And then Lastly, request that HMRC change the scheme. So we definitely wouldn't want to just go ahead and do that. It would be something that we first discussed with our line manager, and then they would more than likely discuss it directly with the client. So that would be option two. Right, the next question then says, you have another client, Little Tumblers Limited. Little Tumblers Limited have received a notice to state that they are in a surcharge period following the late payment of VAT in the previous quarter. Little Tumblers Limited has an annual turnover of £653,000. This quarter's VAT return to the 30th of November 2021 has been submitted on time and shows VAT due of £27,300. Inform the directors of Little Tumblers Limited of the consequences of not making the payment for the quarter ending the 30th of November 2021 on time. Complete the following statement. If the payment is late, Little Tumblers Limited will receive, and we've got the following options. A penalty, a penalty and an extension of the surcharge period by 12 months, or an extension of the surcharge period by 12 months. Well, if we fail to pay our VAT on time, the penalty for that is exactly that, a penalty, but it would also extend the surcharge period by a further 12 months. So it would be the middle option. And I'm pretty sure if you look through your reference material, that will also be given to you. Right, the very last task then says calculate the maximum penalty Little Tumblers Limited will receive if the payment is late. Enter your answer to two decimal places. So we are back to our reference material here, which we brought up earlier, and we want to go to late filing and late payment. So the column we want to be looking at is the surcharge if the annual turnover is 150,000 or more, as the annual turnover in this case is 653,000. So the business is already in a surcharge period as it states within the question. So if they were to make payment late, this would be their first default within the surcharge period. So we want to be looking at this section here. So it would either be 2%, of the VAT due, or if it's below £400, then no surcharge would apply. So what we want to do is calculate 2% of the VAT due, i.e. the 27,300. So we do 27,300 times by 2%, which gives us a figure of £546. So it says no surcharge if this is less than 400. Well, as the penalty amount would be £546, this would be the amount of the penalty. So within here, it would be £546. 
and that would be the maximum penalty that Little Tumblers Limited would receive if the payment is late. Just close down our reference material. And that covers our mock run through for tax processes for business. If you have found this video useful, remember to drop it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more AAT content. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.